Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are continuing with yet again part nine of our CNC plasma controllers built incorrectly series. I know many of you out there are getting a lot of information from these. And if anything, I wanted to make you ask yourself to these vendors, to these YouTubers, the right questions so that you get the right information. This video is interesting in the fact that we're going to be taking a look at a vendor produced system and some end users that are modifying their system so that they can either expand it with additional components purchased from the vendor or correct issues with the controllers so that they're no longer having EMI issues. Now what's really sad about this is there are YouTubers still giving out affiliate links to this vendor knowing that they're doing a video on correcting a circuit board for this vendor due to the fact that it's having some end users experience EMI and that's just where it begins. So let's just jump right in. And the connector you have the two uh, harnesses that go plug into the uh... Okay, guys, as usual, we do not see the proper double shielded cabling being used on that GX16 lead. We also do not see any shield drains coming off any of the pigtails. But to top it all off, the switches being used, are they waterproof? Should they be waterproof? Of course they should. If you're using a water table and a plasma system, you require an IP67 rating on the switches so that any water that splashes up on your switch doesn't essentially short the switch or cause any type of longevity issues. This is best practice, seldom discussed, and once again, you'll see links in the video description below. Control board. Uh, we have all the zip ties they sent with us. That was nice of it. We have... Uh... Okay, well, that goes to the uh, run switches. We recommend dismounting your electronics enclosure from the leg tube of the machine and placing it on its backside during this procedure. High voltage warning. Please ensure that your electronics enclosure is turned off and that the 110 power cable and USB cable. Guys, all of your ground leads in your system should be green and not red. Red is typically a power source color or a signal color. These are things to pay attention to because you want your system's grounds to be easy to allocate should you have to work on your system. Okay, now we open up the box and of course we can see inside uh, no shielded leads going to the drives at all. They're not filtered. Um, there's no ground bus present, so of course you can't use anything shielded. Uh, once again, we define what is a major problem we see on plasma controller builds. One right here. I hope you guys appreciate this angle as much as I do because not only is this system not properly grounded using a bus bar and not of course using filtered or shielded leads going to the drives, it's also using a USB controller, which is a definitive no-no with a plasma system in general just due to the fact that they're unstable. So you can see that first pin. That first pin is marked. GND, and then limb one, limb two, limb three. The red one goes on GND. Green goes on limb one, the other goes on limb two. Okay guys, this is interesting because it's not something I've discussed really in previous videos, but I want to draw your attention to this because it's still worthy to understand it. If you look at the motor leads that are plugged in, you can see X direction and then over here I believe it says Z if you look carefully. You'll look at the lead colors are different. Now that's completely illogical. And what I mean to say is that most vendors would try to simulate all of the leads being the same color allocated to whatever axis they're working with. It's just more general for their clients to work with. Typically when you see that, it's usually due to an overseas manufacturer actually making their systems because they make it arbitrarily. You can see you have orange, it looks like purple, yellow, blue, then it goes to green, red, I don't know if that's brown or black, and then red. 
I mean, these are completely random colors. And again, not typical of what you would see if, again, a vendor was actually paying attention and saying, hey, you know, let's keep all of our motor leads the same color going to our drive so the guys can allocate them easily to an axis. Okay, guys, I've inserted a snippet of the YouTube channel. Of course, I removed any of the direct links to the channel and any regards to the table manufacturer. But I want to draw your attention to no more EMI issues with this simple mod. And they're discussing modifying the circuit board that is the controller of the system. Once again, uh, deciphering the signals, which is USB. Now, what's really interesting, if you come down to the video description portion at the very last two sentences it says it's important to mention this is not a and of course I removed the information uh, many plasma CNC tables battle EMI issues I found out as I was researching this issue grounding bus bars grounding rods and many other additional features have been added and sold aftermarket to deal with this issue well that's really interesting don't you guys think I mean so these vendors know that their controllers are built basically unstable and are being sold so what they do is they get a YouTuber who's got a following, once again, 39,000 here, and then they put links to affiliate codes with discounts of like 100 bucks, and here's another affiliate link up in the top left. And what they do is they basically tell them, hey, guys, you wash my back, I'll wash yours. You link my tables, and it, whatever you guys can get me, I'll give you a discount, and then they pay them. So I understand how the game works. Many of you do as well. But the thing is, we need to have some integrity to what we're actually offering people. It's one thing to do this and then offer a quality product. But when they're not, what does that say? I mean, what does that say about, num number one, the vendor? We already know that. But as far as YouTubers doing this, I really want to hear your opinions on this. Because this is really frightening that guys are looking simply at a price or a discount rather than actually understanding if they don't read the entire description Basically, they're just openly admitting, hey, we know this exists, or at least to some degree, which, again, we'll never know what that means. Has it ever been quantified how many end users have problems? We don't know. But if you don't read, you'll never know. And that's why I say do your due diligence, pay close attention to the videos I'm presenting you with, and ask the right question to these vendors. If you guys have questions, you can always contact me. Okay, guys, just so everyone knows I'm being fair, I went to the manufacturer's website, and you can see I'm on their troubleshooting section. Of course, I removed any information that would link the controller or the manufacturer, but they do state communication loss between machine and computer control during Mach 3, and they give you symptoms, and if you look and you compare it to Bowles' email from CNC Drive, once again, lead engineer over there, and they work with the UC100 as they manufacture it, they discuss on this site the same thing that Balazs discuss with the USB motion controllers. And I've said this in a lot of videos, guys. USB is not the most stable form of signals uh, as far as being sent and received. So you need to keep that in mind. It's only a 5-volt power source. It's only working with conjunction of proper grounding. And truth be told, when you deal with the amount of EMI produced by plasma systems, they just should not be used. That being said, if you go to the troubleshooting section where it states stepper motors are missing steps stalling during program motion, once again, there's a lot of different things that they cover as far as symptoms and, you know, possible solutions. But it's interesting. They don't discuss anything about the system not being grounded that potentially could cause signal corruption or the fact that the motors aren't using double shielded cables or filtered leads going into the drives, guys. The bottom line is a vendor like this should not be selling systems or for that matter, they should at least make all of their end users aware that they will have to purchase additional accessories to complete their controllers the proper way. These are things that, once again, novice users do not know, and they think they're buying a turnkey system, and really they're buying turnkey problems. So please be careful before you spend your hard-earned money. Just to confirm, guys, you can see that this 
enclosure is the same exact unit that was in the first portion of the video, which once again reflects that this YouTube video is depicting the same unit from the same vendor. And that's what these YouTubers are doing. They're going to go through their uh, reworking of the USB controller to hopefully stabilize it. Okay, guys, you heard him right. He's taking a picture so he can reference it to know how everything is connected. Or you could just do it right the first time and have diagrams added by the vendor so that end users can service their system. All right, guys, take this into account. You just spent thousands of dollars on a plasma system, table, whatever it may be. And then you have to quantify how much time it's going to take for you to go in and basically do more engineering disassembly to correct what you just bought. I mean, to me, it makes no sense, but this is what's going on. There were uh, four little nylon spacers that sat underneath. So, so yeah, a little standoffs. So make sure you have those. Uh, I, I have some really long needle list uh, tweezers here, but any set of tweezers will do just fine for that. Um, so we're going to start. We're going to take the hot air rework, and I'm going to turn this just a hair. Uh, and I'm trying to direct air away from the rest of the components on the board, so I'm not putting unnecessary uh, heat in the board. But there aren't a lot of other components right near here. It's a minute to get it hot enough. You should see the solder silver up and turn more shiny metallic when, uh, when it gets to temp. Well, I honestly have to appreciate the fact that he is using flux, but keep in mind, guys, many of you have never done soldering on a circuit board. That's a, a whole different soldering in that it's surface technology, and if you don't have the proper soldering station, which I sell, and I can tell you right now it goes for about $150, these are things you will need to do this correctly. So just keep this in mind, that all these skills all of these things that you supposedly pay for when this system was engineered, you potentially would have to modify this or in some cases just replace the board in general because the system isn't stable. There we go. All right. So I've got a little ductor here. Probably can't even hardly see that on camera, but uh, that's a piece we don't need anymore. And we're just going to bridge that over with solder. We need to be careful. It's a little hot for a minute. I've got off. I don't need it anymore. Quieter in here. Um, I did wind up using a little bit uh, of a damp sponge of a uh, metal sponge like I have here. Uh, and we're going to heat it up. Okay, guys, that wraps up another video in the series. I will, of course, be doing another one next week. Once again, as long as you're interested, I'll keep doing the videos. And at least it will make you guys ask the right questions. Do your due diligence and make sure that you're well informed of where you're spending your hard-earned money. Thank you all for your support. Take care.